Hello friends. Uh, today the topic of uh, our discussion is solution. In this chapter, we will study about the particularly solution, concentration types, solubility. This is very important. On the basis of solubility, we will discuss about the Henry law and afterwards Rolle's law. Then we have ideal and non-ideal solution. Uh, in plus one we have already discussed about the ideal and non-ideal gases now we have solution on the same way ideal and non-ideal solution then afterwards it is the uh, property of the non-ideal solution that is called the azeotropes and then the backbone of this chapter that is called the colligative properties very important one numerical of three marks contain in the board exams always contain in the board exams and then we have the Wendt factor so these are the things which we will cover in our chapter that is called the solution basically uh, solution is the first chapter of our chemistry plus two class so uh, previously it was the second chapter but now I think uh, solid state has been removed from our syllabus so now solution is the first chapter now very important बहुत सारे पार्ट्स इसके ऐसे हैं जो न्यूमेरिकल बेस्ड हैं बट दे आर वेरी सिंपल दे आर सिंपल सिंपल कंसेप्ट्स व्हिच वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन दिस चैप्टर व्हिच मेक आवर स्टडी वेरी इजी यू नो दिस चैप्टर इंक्लूडिंग एट मेन इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स एंड आफ्टरवर्ड्स यू विल सी द इजीनेस ऑफ दिस चैप्टर वेरी इजी वेरी सिंपल Okay, so let's start with the part solution. We will discuss about the simple study of the solution, definition and all. So students, uh, this is the uh, first topic of this chapter that is called solution. <clears throat> so what is solution? Basically, we should know three things about the solution. These are, it should be a homogeneous mixture. ये कैसा होना चाहिए होमोजीनियस होना चाहिए एंड सेकंड थिंग इट हैज टू कंपोनेंट्स वन इज सोल्यूट एंड अदर वन इज सॉल्वेंट वन इज सोल्यूट एंड अदर वन इज सॉल्वेंट दीज टू कंपोनेंट शुड नेवर रिएक्ट विद ईच अदर ये दोनों आपस में रिएक्ट नहीं करने चाहिए इफ दे विल रिएक्ट देन व्हाट हैपन इफ दे विल रिएक्ट देन इट विल नॉट ए सॉल्यूशन इट विल फॉर्म अ अदर केमिकल कंपाउंड so one particular thing we should know about it one solute and one solvent two components of the solution which should never react with each other okay and one more important thing about the solution that we can add a prescribed amount of solute into the solvent it is not possible that we can add particularly as much as amount of the solute into our solvent so there is a limit so these three things we should know about the solution and we can easily make the definition of the solution so first of all we should study about the component of the solute and solvent so what are solute actually solute actually the um, uh, the component which is added in the small quantity okay the lesser amount mein aapko milega it is always called solute and rest which is available with a large amount wo kya kehlayega that is called solvent simple and one more thing I am remembering you again that they should never react with each other one solute and one solvent should never react with each other okay so these three components uh, these three points uh, which I, I have already told you about the solution that is solution is a homogeneous mixture in which its component never react with each other non-reactive components and the solute should be added in a varied composition in limit we can say the limit that we can add solute into the solvent okay so in our syllabus we have binary solutions so the question arises what are binary solution actually simple way understand it like say this is sample of water in which we are adding salt so salt is always adding less amount and water is available in the 
large amount. So in simple word we can say the salt is solute and water is solvent. How many components are there? One is of solute and one is of solvent. So two components are there. So that's why this by word come. By means what? By means two. By means two. If for the sake, if we take this is a sample of water and can we add two solute into it? The answer is yes. We can add two, three, even more solute into it. In that particular case, if we are adding along with salt, sugar is also added into it. Then how many components, total components are there? So solute, two solutes are there. One is salt and other one is sugar and one solvent. So total there are three components. So these type of sol uh, solutions are called trinary solutions. But in our syllabus, we shall study only binary solution. So that's all about the solution. Thank you. So students, as we have already learned about the solution, now this is the types of the solution. We will study about the types of the solution. So basically, what is the basic agenda of the uh, classify the solutions so we will choose the physical state say this is a simple table in your uh, book as well but students don't ignore this table because so many times maximum questions in board exam asked from this table as well and you know the student still I mean not aware of this table and examples so we will do it carefully first question is on the basis of physical state how many types of solutions are there so basically it is of nine types how many types nine types say this is the solute and this is the solvent as we have decided we will classify on the basis of physical state so we are just taking the physical state of solute first solid liquid gas okay and it is dissolving solid so solid is a solvent solid will be the maximum amount and these will be the lesser amount so that's why they will work as a solute they will work as a solute in the same way in other phase solid liquid gas and now we are taking the state of solvent okay and in the same way we solid liquid gas and still we change the state of the solvent okay so by this way one two three four five six seven eight nine there are nine types of solutions on the basis of physical state we are talking about the physical state okay so let's take first example how we studied the solid in solid solid dissolve in solid so the solution type will be solid in solid how we can read it solid in solid the best example is alloy okay in daily basis we use lots of alloy bronze brass a new alloy is there that is called the german silver uh, you should know the uh, composition of the german german silver next we are having liquid in solid okay the so study it like that liquid in solid Students, can you have an example of liquid in solid? I think that is quite typical because uh, on a single moment you can't uh, realize it. It is a crystalline solids like copper sulfate, pentahydrated, okay, washing soda. These all are the uh, liquid in solid solution. These are the example of liquid in solid solution. Then we have gas in solid. You know, gas in less amount in solid in the large amount. That is also the hydrogen in platinum. You know, the group D element are used as a source of hydrogen. Here we are using as a uh, source of hydrogen. So they, they will make a solution in it. Gas in solid. Now in the same way, solid in liquid. Very simple. Salt dissolved in water. Very simple it is. Liquid in liquid. These are also the common example. Alcohol dissolved in water. Then we have gas dissolved in liquid. Gas. Can gas be dissolved in liquid? Yes. 
वी आर यूजिंग इन समर सीजन दैट इज कार्बोनेटेड ड्रिंक्स कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स जो हम पीते हैं दैट इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ गैस इन लिक्विड देन वी हैव सोलिड इन गैस एंड सोलिड इन गैस इज ऑल्सो वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल लाइक आयोडीन इज अ नॉन मेटल एंड इट इज अवेलेबल इज इज इन सॉलिड स्टेट तो सॉलिड सॉलिड इन गैस आयोडीन इन एयर ओके liquid in gas liquid in gas can liquid in gas possible yes humidity in gas this humidity which we can't see in our with our naked eyes so it is available in between the environment that is humidity droplets of water then at last we are having gas in gas gas in gas a like simple example air air is a mixture it is a homogeneous mixture uh available in all the environment that is the there is a particular amount of oxygen that is 21% and nitrogen that is 78% so this 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 will form a homogeneous mixture in total how many types are there there are nine types okay thank you hello students uh now we will study about the some concentration terms which include in this chapter basically to understand the solution the concentration terms plays a very important role because by knowing the concentration of the solute we can easily predict the strength of the solution so we divided concentration terms of solution into two parts one is type 1 concentration and other one is type 2 concentration see uh, this is uh, also a very important question as per the competition level that how we can divide type 1 and type 2 concentration say there are two ways we can divide it one is type 1 concentration is temperature dependent so that is very important it has been already asked that how we can differentiate type 1 and type 2 concentration so type 1 concentration is temperature dependent in other way type 2 concentration is temperature independent very important it is ma it is volume related type 1 concentration is volume related basically there is a relation between volume and temperature we know that by increasing that temperature the volume is increasing also increasing so on this basis uh, there is a relationship between temperature and volume but on other basis it is a mass related type 2 concentration is mass related so can you imagine temperatures depend upon the mass the answer is no like in hot summer day it is not possible that you can reduce your weight okay like uh, at home you are of 100 kg but the temperature was 50 degree celsius and as you walk in the uh, summer in 50 degree celsius temperature your mass is reduced reduces to also 50 kg that is not possible okay so temperature there is a no relationship between temperature and mass okay by increasing the temperature uh, the mass will never effect mass will never effect so that's why these are temperature independent and these are temperature dependent so one basic reason is we can find the volume where in the denominator in each of the there are four basically concentration which we are going to study in each concentration term you will find the volume in the uh, in the denominator okay in the denominator so in the base okay so the first concentration and concentration term is percentage by volume it is denoted by v by v and the second one is percentage weight by volume w by v the upper term the upper term is always representing solute it is representing solute and the lower term which is denominator that is always represents the solution not solvent it is always representing the solution solution so here volume by volume means both it is representing the its physical state volume volume means we are talking about the, the physical state of solute that is liquid and volume solution is also 
liquid that is volume is dissolving volume and in liquid is dissolving liquid in other way that is weight by volume that means solute is solid and this is solution okay and then we will discuss about the molarity and normality so first of all we will discuss about the type 1 concentration and afterwards we will move to the type 2 concentration uh, just take a look of the type 2 concentration these are percentage by mass as we can see w by w both are solids okay mole fraction molality it is molality and this is molarity there is a difference r and l there is a difference and at last we are having parts per million okay so these are the concentration terms total eight concentration terms are there and on this on the basis of this some numericals we will also discuss okay now one more important discussion is here like as we have already discussed this is volume related and this is mass related can you suggest me any physical property which can relate volume and mass yes you are right we are talking about density what is the formula of density density, density is equal to mass by volume so if we want to convert type 1 concentration to type 2 concentration or type 2 concentration to type 1 concentration we should know about the density because what is happening in type 1 concentration in the denominator we are having volume and in type 2 concentration we are having mass in the denominator so due to this reason we can easily convert type 2 concentration to type 1 and type 1 concentration to type 2 okay so now uh, we will start with our type 1 concentration and the first one is we will do percentage by volume <coughs> hello friends uh, now uh, we are having the type 1 concentration type 1 concentration the first part of type 1 concentration is percentage by volume as we have already discussed the formula of uh, this will be uh, v by v the the abbreviation of this is v by v the upper part of this will be solute and the lower part will also be solution that will be the solution what is the meaning of v by v that is it is also ml and it is also ml and ml means this is also liquid and this is also liquid so this solution is of which type it is the type of liquid in liquid solutions okay so it is the liquid in liquid solution so what is the definition of this uh, concentration term the volume of solute present in 100 ml of solution why 100 ml because we are talking about percentage whenever you see the percentage whenever you see the percentage your final term will be always 100 it is mandatory whenever you see the percentage the final term will be 100 ml or 100 here we are talking about volume so it is ml and when we are talking about say uh, mass then it is gram so whenever there is a percentage the final term will be always 100 okay so again uh, we are talking about the definition of it the volume of the solute present in 100 ml of solution i am emphasis a uh, lot on the definition because we have lots of such kind of terms and the uh, meaning of the definition will be same as it is but we can change it on the basis of its physical state say if it is mass then we will change the uh, the final solution ml to gram okay the rest of the thing will be same okay so uh, please do take care of it then the formula of percentage by v will be volume of solute as the simple definition of the percentage the volume of the solute divided by volume of the solution solute divided by solution we have already talked about it multiply by 100 why 100 because we are talking about percentage and we, are, we have find the percentage so the question arises how we can find out the 
in volume of the solution as we can see the both term solute also present in ml means volume and solvent will also in ml so can we add ml into ml we can say yes we can easily add ml into ml so we can directly find the volume of the solution because both are extensive property both are extensive property what are extensive property which depend upon the concentration we have already read in plus one class intensive and extensive property if there is some intensive property along with the extensive property can we add directly into it the answer is no like for the sake of a example can we add kilogram into kilometer no we cannot add okay we can only add kilometer into kilogram into kilogram and kilometer into kilometer so that is right but we cannot add both of this we cannot add so these solute and solvent are present in the volume means ml so they can directly add into it okay so we can find the volume of the solution very easily so that's all about the uh, percentage by volume so here we have a little numerical on it let's take a numerical okay just to see how we can find it out first of all from the uh, data from the definition we have to just write the data okay like uh, question number one is find the volume percentage volume percentage of solute if 25 ml of alcohol is added into say 50 ml of water so this is the problem with us so first of all write the data first of all write the data we have the volume of solute that is 25 ml we have volume of solution added into the of solution it is solution B. not water it is solution B. the solution of it is water is also given we can also find it out okay so first of all let's take the example with solution then we will add into water as well okay and it is 50 ml so the formula is percentage v by v equal to volume of solute divided by volume of solution okay so we have all the data so it is like 25 divided by 50 into 100 to that is 50 percent now change it with the water the water is act as a solvent okay so we know solute is same that is 25 ml solvent 50 ml total V solution will be 75 ml so we have 25 divided by 75 solid and you can have that ok it is around 25 upon 75 into 100 3 33.33% fine thank you hello friends so now we are moving to our second uh, concentration term of type first i'm again repeating the concentration term is of type one and it is the second part of the type one concentration 
so it was as we have already uh, discussed about it that is the percentage weight by volume and it is denoted by w by v it is denoted by w by v the upper part again denote the solute and the lower part denote the solution now it is w uh, means we are talking about weight so it is in the gram means it is solid and it is in the volume so it is in the ml it means it is in liquid now consider the thing thing it is the which type of solution it is it is solid dissolving liquid it is solid dissolving liquid remember it okay so as we have already discussed in the previous concentration term how we can write the definition now see the solid dissolving liquid how many liquid again it is percentage the liquid amount will be fixed that is of 100 ml why ml because it is volume because it is volume then the definition will be weight of solute present in 100 ml of solution i am again repeating weight of solute why weight because we are adding solid into liquid so weight of solute present in 100 ml of solution then uh, the def, uh, the formula will be percentage w by v will be the weight of solute as we have already discussed about the uh, divided by weight of solution that is weight of so, uh, volume of solution multiply by 100 so that will be the formula now uh, i have already written a line over there just try to understand this what is the meaning of this line an aqueous solution contain 30% weight by volume of urea just to try to read this and understand this what is the meaning because this type of lining i mean this line this or this type of lines you can see uh, somewhere else even in your uh, some uh, medical uh, solutions also uh, written with this type of lines so now we are going to understand about this line it means an aqueous solution aqueous means we are talking about water means solvent is water solution containing 30% weight by volume weight means it is solid volume is liquid we have already predicted of urea means urea say this is water say this is water and urea is added into it if the solution the total volume of the solution is 100 ml then 30 g of urea added into it how many 30 g of urea added into it the meaning of this so i am just telling the final uh, conclusion of this line means 30 g urea is added in 100 ml of solution okay 30 g of urea is added in 100 g of solution so now write it carefully over it kaise likhenge sir let's take a look so how we can make the solution we can make the solution like this solute plus solvent will give rise to solution here we don't know the solvent we are unaware with the solvent but this amount is fixed that is 100 ml and this is solute this is also fixed that is 30 g okay so 30 g is in 100 ml of solution now question arises can we here i am just rubbing it can we calculate directly solution or i mean uh, from here we can add or subtract this 100 ml uh, or 30 g the answer is no like i am just writing here is 
solute is 30 gram solvent we don't know and the solution is 100 ml so we can't subtract ml from gram understand we should know the density yeah, we should know the density. I'm just giving it if the density is 1.25 gram per ml, then what is the weight of solvent? Now, can we calculate it? Let's see. The formula of density is density equal to mass by volume. We know the volume of solution and we know the density. Density is 1.25 and mass we are unaware and the volume is 100 the mass will be 125 gram now the, if 100 ml solution is there according to this density the mass will be 125 gram now we can calculate it now we can subtract subtract 125 minus 30 the answer is 95 gram so this is the answer 95 gram okay so carefully understand this we can't add or subtract if the both the terms are not in same unit okay either they should extensive or intensive or they must have the same unit only then we can add or subtract thank you